Andrew, you're about the most submissive, humble, flexible worship leader I've ever worked with, ever. You had no idea, and yet you still were ready, and I appreciate that. Actually, I hope God does that a lot more, all right? So, it's Palm Sunday, and what a good Sunday to spend and just praising him and giving him thanks for what he has done for us and who he is. About, I, I know I told Larry, I don't remember who else, about two or three weeks ago, I got thinking about, uh, and I wasn't going through the, the last words of Jesus, but I, my attention I think it was because of where I was and where we've been as a church that it caught my attention. But in uh, John chapter 19, uh, the second to the last words of Jesus were, I thirst. And um, I have spent a lot of time thinking about those words and and um, I'm not going to give you, I don't think the Lord wants me to give you everything that I have before me. And so I want us to read it, and then I'll give you what I think the Lord wants us to hear. It's John chapter 9, I mean, yeah, John chapter 19, verse 28 and 29. I don't know how far I've given you. I may read down into verse 30 as well. It says, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished. It's interesting. Uh, I thought that was, that just messed me up. He knows everything is done, yet there's one more thing for him to do. He even says that in the same sentence. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled. All things are accomplished, but the scripture might be fulfilled. In other words, there's one more thing. He said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he, he gave up his spirit. The, when it says that, the, um, I'm only, Velvet, you might as well forget just about everything I've given you. And um, let's just go to Psalms um, 69. And so some of your Bibles probably have off to the side the a little reference for you to go look, and it'll be Psalms 69 or Psalms 22. And Psalms 22 is a, is a good one, but Psalms 69 is almost word for word found. It's Psalms 69, verse 21. I'm, uh, so let's just read it. It says, they also gave gall for my food, and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. I don't know when it began when I started thinking about I thirst. Uh, but I remember a little after that, I was laying on my living room floor on the rug like I've been doing for the last few weeks. And I was praying. And, and, and I guess all I'm supposed to do is share with you what, what I believe the Lord told me then. And so that's all I'm going to do. And I'm, I'm praying to the Lord. I, I said, you thirst. Uh, so, well, Lord God, I know what I've been taught. Uh, but I, I really feel in my heart that there's something more there that, that I haven't been taught, that I haven't seen, that, that there is a thirst in you that's far deeper that, that didn't end on the cross. I thank you, Lord, just as all of us do, 
that our Lord came. He came and he lived and he died and he rose again. But listen to me. He came thirsty. He died thirsty. He's still thirsty. He's always been thirsty. It's not just a fulfillment of a, of a verse about vinegar. It is who God is. He's always been thirsty. He came seeking to save that which was lost. Why? According to Peter and Timothy, we know that because he's always been desirous, always been longing, always wanting for all men to be saved. He's been thirsty from the beginning. He was thirsty when he didn't find it with Adam and Eve. He was thirsty when he didn't find it before the flood. He found it. He was thirsty after the flood with Noah. He was thirsty with Abraham. He was thirsty with David. He was thirsty with all of the Israelites. He's thirsty as he walks through the midst of us. He's always been thirsty. Then it was while I was laying on the floor with my Bible open, and my references just said, look at, go to Psalm 69, verse 21. But read verse 20. And those of you that know that I'm a literalist, you know that one comes before two, and three before four, and 20 comes before 21, and you can't get to 21 without going through 20. And listen to what it said. Can't even see it. Not up there. <laughs> no, just reproach has broken my heart. This is a messianic. This is a verse about God. Reproach, rebellion, the rejection of me has broken my heart. I am full of heaviness. I looked. I look for someone to take pity, to, sh to show compassion, to show mercy, to show love. But there wasn't none. I looked for comforters, but I found none. They gave me gall for my food, for my thirst. They gave me vinegar. In other words, they didn't understand. They didn't know what I, what I was hungry for. They didn't know what I was thirsty for. They gave me poor substitutes. The truth is, anything they would have given him, if they had just given him straight water, it wouldn't have been what he wanted. If they had given him set a whole meal before him, it wouldn't have been what he wanted. He wasn't hungry and thirsty, and no matter what man could give him there, he didn't find it. He's always been thirsty. And I, I began to pray. And then I watched some things happen up here today. I've been, I was praying anyway. I knew what I had been praying. I was thanking God for a different legacy that God has given my children and grandchildren than the one I had. I had good parents. But Jesus wasn't, God wasn't the main thing. But I watched and, and I, God began to think, you know, what you were hungry for. Because some of you know there's one prayer that Trish and I have prayed long before we ever had our first kid. We have prayed it over and over again. I did it at Abby and Kay's wedding. I said it there. I said it when I prayed my hands on you and prayed over you. I've said the prayer over and over again almost every day for all my life. Lord, let my seed be faithful. Let my seed and my seed's seed be found faithful to you until you come. I'm hungry for a different legacy. I want my kids to be more faithful than me. I want my grandkids to be more faithful than their fathers. And I want my great-grandkids to be more faithful than... You understand? And as I, there's a lot of things I do. When I come in here and I walk through the aisle, one, I, I want to 
I want to find out where you are. And you usually let me know if there's something going on in your life. And I want to know what's going on in your life. It's a chance for me to smile at you. Even if you weren't smiling when you came here. It's also a chance for me to see and and to know what your past has said to me. Where you used to be, but aren't there no more. And unfortunately, sometimes it gives me the opportunity to see where individuals aren't where they used to be. God wants a different legacy in your life. Right, Jeans? And he's doing that through you. And I've watched JJ. I don't know what everybody else has watched, but your sensitivity over the last few weeks, God's working in you. I don't know whether your wife can see it not yet or not, but I can see it. Jordan, you want a different legacy for your kids, right? Well, that means you got a thirst for a different legacy. You got a thirst for God. So that your sons will thirst for God. And I guarantee it, you two men, if you'll thirst for God, a thirst will rise in your wives. And wives, if they're not thirsty, then you be thirsty and it'll, it'll mess them up. I know. Just look over there. Everything that Jesus did the very act of God the Father sending His Son. Everything about Easter is to declare to you and I that we are worth His love, His time, His sacrifice, that we are worth it, and that He thirsts for each and one of us. He hungers for us. Can you even, can you even imagine I can't even hardly get a, my grips and arms around it. I, I don't know why he would thirst and hunger for me. But he does. And he wants you to be thirsty and hungry people. So much so, I mean, most of you know Psalms 107 by Verse 9, by heart, I've quoted it so many times in the last 10 years. He satisfies the longing soul. He fills the hungry soul. Oh, oh, that man would give him thanks for the great and mighty things he has done. The cross, Easter, and everything about it, stirring you and I to let us know it's not just a past thing. It's a present thing. He's a God that embraces us, loves us. He hungers and thirsts for you and I, even while we were yet sinners, even then when, we're in the, when we don't want anybody else to know, when we're doing the most ungodly thing we can do, when we're doing it over and over and over and over again. He still loves us. He still dies for us. He hungers for us. All he asks is that we would hunger and thirst for him. Do you know how hungry he is for you? What we do in here. I was reading Isaiah. I didn't, I didn't realize this phrase was in the Bible until this week. I was reading Isaiah, at least in my translation anyway. It says, nothing but a drop in a bucket. I thought, well, that had to be a southern word. Somebody had to be, fill, be milking cows or doing something in the mountains of East Tennessee and said, nothing but a drop in a bucket. But it's in Isaiah. And the sad thing about it is he's talking about his wrath. 
And he's telling man, what you've experienced is nothing. It's just a drop in a bucket compared to what you're going through. Our love for him, when it's all said and done, even a whole life of serving him is really just going to be a drop in the bucket compared to the love and the service he has given us. He loves you. He wants you to love him. He thirsts for you. Long before you ever got here, he was thirsty for you this morning. He wants you to be thirsty. You can have a different legacy. You can leave a different legacy. You can, you can live a different future. You got to become hungry. Not just because a preacher says so. Because God's looking for that. Funny, he couldn't find any. Understand that your and my best and all of our best to him will not quench his thirst. It will be like vinegar on a sponge. I just want you to be thirsty. Are you thirsty? Today can be the day of salvation for some of you. Today could be real Palm Sunday. You could run forth and sing praises, give your life to him. Oh, that men would give him thanks for the great and mighty things that he has done. Today could be the day of salvation for you. For some of you, it could be the day of repentance. Some of you fathers, you just need to... Just open your eyes and look around you and realize you will reap what you're sowing. <laughs> but you don't have to. You don't have to. Well, that was longer than I thought. Let's stand. And you keep keeping the distance between hearing his voice and obeying it very, very short. He thirsts for you this morning. It appears this morning that he found a bunch of us that were thirsty. Have you made? You may not have been coming here very long. That, that's not important to God. I guarantee you, he's been speaking to you a lot longer before you ever started coming here. He loves you. He's already got his arms out embracing you. All you do have to do is embrace him. Either for the first time or once again.